Hello everyone, welcome back. Today I will be showing you how I go from this to this using a full face of some of my favorite makeup artists' favorite products. For a long time now, many of you have been asking me to share some of the content creators that I personally follow on different social media platforms. And I've been meaning to do that video and meaning to do it, and for some reason or another, I just haven't gotten to it. I hope to finally do it eventually, but if you are one of those people who has asked for that list of people I follow, you are in luck because I'm going to be sharing quite a few of them with you today. None of these makeup artists that I'll be talking about do really full, over-the-top glam. I feel like they all do just very pretty, everyday makeup. I say that kind of hesitantly because everyone's interpretation of everyday makeup is different. I wear a lot more makeup on a daily basis than I'm sure a lot of you do. My point is that I personally find the makeup looks that they do to be absolutely beautiful. And I will have all of their Instagram pages linked as well as all the products down below in the description box so you can check them out. Not all of them. In fact, I'm not sure if any have actual YouTube channels, unfortunately. So I found most of the information about the products they do like on either Instagram or on TikTok. So without any further ado, I want to get started doing a full face of makeup using some of my favorite makeup artists' favorite products. While I did have most of the products in my collection already, I did have to go out and buy a few of them. And I'm starting off with this moisturizer from Tatcha. It's called the Water Cream. This is a favorite of Melissa Herkman. She is a makeup artist in LA. She does a lot of fashion and beauty campaigns. She travels all over the world and she shares a ton of her favorites over on her Instagram page. She listed this as her favorite pre-makeup moisturizer for anyone with oily skin and large pores, which is me. I have used this in the past and I loved it. The only reason I ever moved on from it was because I was sent other products to try. And after using it again today, I am reminded just how good it really is. For foundation and concealer, I'm using these two products from Dose of Colors. These are a favorite of Faces by Rob. He also does makeup for a lot of beauty and fashion campaigns including all of the guest clothing campaigns. So whenever you pass by a guest or Marciano store or see a billboard for those stores, it is Rob's work on the models. He is absolutely incredible. And from every tutorial I've seen him post, these are the products he always uses for foundation and concealer. I believe they are both extremely underrated the foundation offers flawless medium to full coverage. The concealer is exactly the same. It does not settle into fine lines. If you have not tried either of these products yet, I highly recommend that you do. For contour, I'm using this Giorgio Armani Color Melting Balm. This is a favorite of Carolina Gonzalez. Carolina does makeup for a lot of celebrities and models, including most of the Victoria's Secret models. I believe she has a contract with Armani, which is why she uses so many of their products, but I discovered this through her posts, her makeup breakdowns on her Instagram page, and this product came up consistently, so I figured it must be pretty good, and indeed it is. It's extremely natural looking and easy to work with. And now I'm setting that contour and bronzing up my skin with the Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Airbrush Bronzer, which is a favorite of makeup artist Makeup by Ariel. Ariel does makeup for the Kardashians. Love them or hate them, you've got to admit that their makeup is always on point. Ariel does very clean makeup looks, very soft and pretty, and he speaks a lot about his favorite products over on TikTok when he goes live every so often. Moving on to powder, these by Terry Hyaluronic powders are a favorite of Nikki Makeup. Her real name is Nikki Wolf, and I insist you check out her Instagram page. 
Her work is positively flawless. And the whole reason I ever started using this powder was because of her. And it has become one of my favorites, especially for mature skin. I have both the translucent and the rose tinted shade. I'm going to be using the rose tinted one under my eyes to set my concealer. And then the translucent no color powder on the rest of my face. Nikki always uses a brush to set her concealer, never a sponge, so that's what I'm doing today. For my brows, I'm using these two products from the brand Refi or Refi. I would say that at least three of the makeup artists I'm speaking about in this video use these products and swear by them. They use them in a lot of their tutorials and I've seen the way they've applied this product. And I'm attempting to do it the same way, but I've got to be honest, this first product does not work for me at all, this gel. I'm guessing it works much better when you do your brows before foundation, but that's never gone too well for me. If I attempt to do my brows before foundation, I always end up removing some of the brow when I'm applying the foundation. However, doing it this way causes a lot of weird chunks to form, and I'm using the flat side of the packaging, which is a little brush to brush up my brows and give them that laminated look. And now here I am trying to get rid of those little chunks that were appearing on my skin from the brow gel. I'm trying to like brush them out and wipe them away. It just looks so bad. And now I'm filling in my brows with the brow pencil, which I do like, and the light shade is perfect for me. Do I think that these products are must-haves? Definitely not. I think there are much better brow pencils and brow gels on the market. Up next, I'm using this Stila Stay All Day Eyeliner Pencil in the shade Espresso. This is a favorite of Tennille Jai. She is an Australian makeup artist that I absolutely adore. I actually just ordered her brush set because Melissa Herkman said it was amazing, but because it's shipping from Australia, I expect that it will still be a couple more weeks before I receive it. Anyway, Tennille uses this pencil in many different colors, but Espresso is the one I've seen her use the most. And she does a similar technique to Nikki Wolf, where she will line the eyes with a pencil and then take it up into the crease and blend it out with a brush. So it's almost like this pencil is acting as the eyeshadow and eyeshadow base in one. So that does take a little bit of blending out, but it's definitely worth the effort because doing this makes the eye makeup stay on so much longer than if you just use a powder. I'm now going over that pencil with a powder shadow from the Charlotte Tilbury Exaggerize Eyeshadow Quad. This is a favorite of Megan Lombardi. I've spoken about Megan on my channel before. She is a makeup artist for Charlotte Tilbury. She just worked on several celebrities for both the Academy Awards and the Met Gala. She is extremely talented. She talks about it all the time as being one of her absolute favorite Charlotte Tilbury products. And I've had the opportunity to message back and forth with Megan quite a bit over the past year, and she's just such a sweet and genuine person. She offers one-on-one -on -one makeup lessons for those that might be interested. You definitely are going to want to follow her on both Instagram and TikTok. Oh, she also has a YouTube channel as well. She doesn't post that often, but she does have one. In this footage, I'm applying the prime shade from the Exaggerize Quad underneath my brows. followed by a touch of the pop shade right on my lid using my fingers. And then I take a small pencil brush and run a combination of the shades in large and define under my lower lash lines. Now I'm taking another favorite of Nikki Wolf's, AKA Nikki Makeup. This is the Shantikai Brightening Eye Pencil in the shade Nude. This is truly one of the best pencils for brightening the eyes. And now I'm just going in and curling my eyelashes and doing some tight lining with just a basic black eye pencil. And because pretty much all of these makeup artists use false lashes of some sort, I'm just going to use any old mascara. 
I happen to have this one from Rare Beauty just sitting here that I think is excellent. I will say that most of these makeup artists, if not all, when they use lashes, they use individual lashes or corner lashes. I rarely see them use strips. I would say the most popular lashes for all of these makeup artists are the ones from Nikki Makeup in collaboration with Swede Lashes. They are called the No Lash Lash. So these are the ones I will be using after I do my blush, which is from Chanel, and it's called Rose Initial or Initial. Makeup by Ariel said in one of his recent lives that this is his absolute favorite blush of all time. So of course, everyone who saw that live on TikTok ran out and bought it. I ordered mine from the Chanel website and I can see why it's one of his favorites. It is a beautiful, highly pigmented, long lasting rose pink that I think will look good on everyone. Now it's time to apply the lashes. I personally have a love-hate relationship with these. I think they are so beautiful. However, I have the most difficult time applying them. They're on the pricier side, and I would say I ruin at least one out of every five while attempting to just get them off the tray. And then because they're so light and delicate, I just find them very difficult to apply. I can put on a strip lash or corner lash in under a minute, but I have to tell you the process of applying these today for this video took me about 15 minutes, if not more. But gosh darn it, they do look really, really pretty once you get them on. Moving on to highlighter, Melissa Herkman, Nikki Makeup, and I'm fairly certain Tennille Jai all have raved about this Dior Backstage Highlighter Palette in the shade Universal. I have a different quad called, I think, Rose, and I've never been too impressed by it. However, everybody seems to love this one in Universal, so I decided to go pick it up at Sephora. I used it for the first time in this video, and now I see what the hype is about. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous highlighting palette. I'm finishing off with a lip combo that is a favorite of another Australian makeup artist whom I adore. Her name is Emma Chen. I know I have mentioned her on my channel before. Her work is sort of similar to Tennille Jai. I think Australian makeup artists all have a very similar aesthetic. And Emma's favorite combo for quite a long time now has been MAC Strip Down Lip Pencil, followed by Tom Ford's Lip Lacquer in Soft Core. For some reason, Soft Core looks a lot more pinky on the models I see on her Instagram page. On me, it definitely goes on more orangey, which I still haven't decided if I like or not. I think if I were doing this video again, I might choose a different lip combo. Let me know in the comments what you think of it. Okay, here we have the completed look. Aside from this Refi brow gel and, as I mentioned, my love-hate relationship with these Swede Nikki Makeup No Lash Lashes, everything else I absolutely love. And I am so happy that I added them to my collection. I think it is such a great thing that we are now able to hear straight from the source what makeup artists are using on their celebrity clients or on the models. Back in my day when I would flip through a magazine in the 80s and the 90s and up until around when Instagram became popular and now TikTok's gotten extremely popular, we could only go by little blurbs that we would read in those magazines about what these makeup artists would use. And oftentimes they would list what makeup was used for the cover of a magazine, and it was never really what they used. We found out later that those covers were bought, basically, by a specific makeup brand, so that when you look to see what products were used, they would all be, say, CoverGirl, or L'Oreal, or Estee Lauder. They would match up the products that the makeup artist actually used with similar products from their own brand. A makeup artist never uses, or very rarely, unless they have a contract with a brand, very rarely will they use a full face of one specific brand. 99.9% .9 of makeup artists, when they do 
a face are going to be using a product from this brand and a product from this brand and a product from this brand, much like what you saw me do here today. As I think I mentioned earlier, all of the products will be listed and linked down below in the description box. And the reason why I say that in every video is because I do get feedback fairly often from people who say that they can't find the description box or that I was speaking too fast and they couldn't write things down fast enough, you do not have to write things down. Everything will be in that description box. Whether you're on your phone or on your desktop, you either have to click the little down arrow next to the title or where it says show more. The description box is always there and has all of the information that you are looking for. And I know I did mention this in the intro, but I want to remind you that all of the links to the makeup artists I spoke about in today's video, their Instagram pages will be listed as well. And I want to give a big thank you to them for not gatekeeping and sharing the products that they truly use and love. I think we all appreciate that a lot. And if you appreciated this video and enjoyed it, I would love for you to give it a thumbs up. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, please hit that subscribe button and join the Risa Does Makeup family. I do try to upload new videos at least twice per week. You can also find more content from me on Instagram and on TikTok as well under the same username, Risa Does Makeup. Thank Thank you all so much for watching. I hope to see you in my next video.